Hello guys, and here I am uh, disassembled the tape transports from the body, removed the top part, and now I can see the problem with the brakes. So left work a little bit, right doesn't work at all. And I'm not sure if you see, I'm like observing it just immediately as soon as I opened. You see this lawn spring here, so it's not installed properly. It should be sitting on the each brake evenly, and it's not. Okay, so now I will be fixing it, and it should be work fine after that. And also, owner replaced me to replace, or requested me to replace this uh, 3D printed belt. So you may see how this one look like. It was fine. It was like 0.04 percent valve flutter. So let's see performance of the deck with the rubber belt. I will install one. See you soon. Okay guys, now spring installed, you see from each side it pushes the brakes. And now listen how brakes sound. Right, left one, right one, left one. That's, that's how brakes should work on this deck. Okay. So now I will be replacing belt. I will lubricate the capstan shafts just for the case and assemble it back. So I hope that would be it. See you. Bye bye. Okay, guys, here I installed the tape. So you would be able to see. So that's how brakes should work on this deck. Now it works smoothly and quietly. Place. Okay. Good. Well, let me complete assembly and that would be it. So I hope you enjoyed. I will also measure wound flutter just for the case with new belt because both capstan shafts were held dry. No single sign of lubricant. All right, see you soon. Okay, guys, so here I'm doing test for wow and flutter after I replace the belt. It's technically the same, 0.044, 45 percent goes up down a little bit, but mostly fine. So, and I lubricated the capstan shafts, so that means that uh, this tape transport in a very good shape, so it doesn't change significantly wow and flutter um let me show you belts so okay let's pull them out so that's a rubber belt on the right and this we d printed on the left uh, this rubber is the exact same size as the, in the service manual and 3d printed is a little bit bigger as you may see, and it's not so stretchy as a rubber belt. So if a rubber belt, I can stretch quite a large. See how much I can stretch? And it goes back and it's like really good stretching. Uh, this belt, I almost cannot stretch. So just a little bit. There, that's it. So see, that's it. So it's not stretchy. That's why it's a bigger size. See? I'm not sure how long it will last, and I, but it was installed here and owner asked me to replace it, so that was what I did. Pretty interesting belt, it's a structure you see, layers, how it's been printed, and layers are inside as well, they're just a little bit polished by the capstans. Right, you may see them here, let me see if it's real focus. Right. So that's how it looks like, comparing to the regular belt, rubber. Okay, I'm done, see the brakes. Works like charm. Good. That would be it, I will pack and ship it back, hope owner will be happy.
see you on my next adventures bye bye and here guys final final touches on this deck i measured it, uh, the torque on this take up reel and it was too big it was 65 in playback so i'm adjusted it to be in range like here between 35 and 45 grams and as a result speed normalized it so it gets like 3001 gears yeah you see this are uh, ups and downs technically this is magnetic uh, thing when it runs smoothly it's fine sometimes it's, it's it screams a little bit and here that's probably like in in in, in a good phase it needs to be disassembled and like uh, bearings lubricated for this i believe and this will be even like better one and flatter it's still in norm like you see it gets below 0 0.04 now but uh, and i had to adjust like again like supply side tension and it was easy uh, using the frequency counter so as soon as you over tight uh, frequency start to drop a couple gears and gets to 2995 uh, so it's a job point to find this uh, proper position so it would not over tight and like uh, supply side pitch roller would be able like to pull tape smoothly yeah i don't know what to do with this if i over tight it would not be screaming but uh one flutter will be a little bit higher well, let me think more a little bit about it. So we have brakes, we have everything working. Final touches. So let me see. See you soon. And here we go. I lubricated the shaft for this uh, take up side uh, playback uh, idler. Okay. And uh, here is. Uh, back 35 reverse oh, it was just bigger so fast forward 85 and reverse 80 let's do one more time okay. nice so it's rewinds fast forward quickly now and when it plays back, there is no more the screaming effect. So let's install the tape. Pass forward, rewind, playback. No. <laughs> Maybe it's not a shaft. Maybe this magnetic uh, idler. Like magnetic friction mechanism. Okay, I need to, to open and see what's going on there. I'm not happy. Well, guys, I have no any other chances to fully disassemble uh, this tape transfer because like uh, it's uh, I need to lubricate the shaft. It's screaming. I, I also found issues that uh, these reels you see they don't sit properly they flex too much and when they like rotate the tape so something is wrong i need to check what's wrong probably they are not properly assembled i'm already using my arsenal of automotive tools <laughs> to disassemble this it's it's it takes a lot lots of time really much more than i expected but that's uh, how this deck is built you see i'm already disassembled this magnetic part and I would replace the idlers so I believe they are not holding well. Bye, right. see you soon. Hey guys and I'm continuing disassembly. I pull up this uh, reel mechanism. Uh, there you may see one idler, here is another idler which needs to be replaced. The problem is like I don't have this small tool. I have like one point 27 millimeter and it's not got in so probably it should be smaller 
So to pull it out and fully lubricate these shafts and bearings, I need a little bit more tools. And this is unfortunate. And here you see how this magnetic friction mechanism works. So probably it's the best mechanism I've seen. It should work like very, very well when it's fully assembled, working and tuned. But it will take some time for me. And here you see the same, same pins. Really, I'm not sure why they like so flexible. So looks like they should hold, but they they don't for some reason. I'm not sure why. If you have ideas, let me know. You see, it flex the top cap. It's not the not the nut itself. Uh, let me see. I need to get some tools. See you. Bye bye. Hey guys, now. I've got the tool, so it's 0 0.9 millimeter hexagon <laughs> to unscrew these teeny, teeny screws, see? No. Now, I just lubricated, see how this rolls. That's how it should roll. Quick and easy. Okay. Now let me replace both idlers and let's go from there. See you soon. Hey guys, I just completed lubricating. So that's the shaft number one. It has two sintered brass bearings, another shaft in this motor. And this motor don't run it without uh, pushing it here because it should be sitting on this back pin otherwise you will cut your coils and both here has a sintered brass bearings both shafts here so I had to disassemble lubricate everything make sure that this rolls free and I had to put so there is two you see one screw and another screw from the other side on each of the reels, they still a little bit uh, shaky, but I believe it's maximum I can do. All right now, when everything lubricated, you see I'm replacing this belt. I'm replacing uh, both uh, idlers with the rubber one. So I hope it will perform well now. All right. Let me assemble and see you soon. Bye. Hey guys, uh, continue assembling. I um, already spent quite a few time. I've got the tools to get into this small <laughs> hexagon screws. Uh, and that's I uh, just like uh, been uh, tuning the head of the guide and the head. So when I tune, like, I have to push it up and check that it will go smoothly in all positions. Uh, and same is here for this guide, just to make sure that everything is, is clean. So, and it's now lubricated and it goes much smoother and easier. Both pinch roller arms and the carriage. So we should be good. And I'm already assembled this part here with new idlers and belts. So let's see how it will perform now, because I had to lubricate all shafts, like it's, it was just like very dry. See you soon. Okay guys, finally tape transport assembled. I didn't connect the playback head wires yet, I need to solder them. But at least all modes work, so fast forward, reverse, stop immediately as you see, playback. Engages. All right. That's good news. So I assembled everything correctly. It was lots of work, really. You've seen how many screws was there, right? All right. 
Now I will connect the playback heads. And let's see. And as you see, when we installed this LED light here, the counter started to work during fast forward and rewind because before it was going with one second every second and when during fast forward that was i mentioned all right good nice quiet i hope it will perform even better than before see you soon okay guys and here with the new idlers i just adjusted the torque so see reverse 80 fast forward 80 and 95 reverse and playback 40 even yeah. so good i just see the position uh next i had to disassemble one more time like because it was not playing all tapes and it appears that the sensor switch which uh, uh, selects door open or close uh tilt it a little bit it is just on the single screw and it was not sensing all tapes uh, like half of the tapes this was working and half not so now now it's good as you may see so specifically this tape didn't work for some reason okay closing up so this tape was not working let's just see yeah works fine now now it's quite quick everything lubricated good finally now final tuning and i, I still eager to see if wow and flutter will be improved after i lubricated everything and install it new idlers see you soon and that is three kilogears tape and that's how it looks on the oscilloscope pretty minimum changes should be good well the flutter and speed is good and levels are good so specifically i this tape has been produced on the dragon and you see the levels and everything is right here good everything is even now let's adjust uh, azimuth because i had to change head position while i was tuning while everything was open so let me check now okay well yeah a little bit off Okay, interesting. No, it's it's good. So it keeps levels. Let's be after. Okay, so it's azimuth. It's till 15 kilohertz goes well. Levels even. Good, 10 kilohertz. Nothing changes, that's a good sign. different tape types that was <laughs> why the level changed it a little bit in the end now it should not it should keep it it's 10 kilohertz 11 12 13 14 and 15 see levels not changing all the range so now head perform really really well it's mean the tilt is tuned properly heat is tuned azimuth is tuned and pinch rollers 
work smoothly. Now I like how this back performs on the playback side. So the deviation like half a decibel on the whole range. And only like at one kilohertz and below it increases for one decibel. Why? Well, good. That's the result I'd like to see. So next let me check recording and I will get back to you and we will show measure again. See you soon. Okay guys, it will be the final testing after all tuning and lubrication. So that's the best wall and flutter I can get. And the root cause is uh, pinch roller springs. So they don't give enough tension. I believe they're like a little bit too soft. Um, but uh, all in all, it's pretty good results. You see, it goes below 0.04% and speed is very stable and proper. Okay. So that would be the final test, everything assembled. I particularly like now how the tape transport works, quiet and smooth without producing any squeaking noises and that was bothering me a lot now let's see frequency response tapes uh, for type 1 and type 2 okay type 1 tape let's go to the spectrum analyzer and let's see how it will play so it goes 15 and down. And you see it keeps the same level. Which is pretty good. No differences. That was I expected. Good deck should sound really, really good. So it keeps on the same level. And it's playback. Okay, now let's do type 2. Type first, because I was interested, like, uh, how it's performed. Because as we heard together, right, it plays much better on type 1 and type 2. And here we go. And it skips pretty well, you see. This side is till 10 kilohertz, and the other side, I believe, will go till 15. Yeah, goes well. I'm happy with the results, so I was able to restore this deck properly. It was lots of work, eight days, guys, really. A lot more than I expected, but it's worth it. This deck plays and records really nice. I just recorded a couple songs on different tape types, and it was a beautiful results. All right, now let's do minus 20 white noise. And start recording. That's type 1 tape. I can reduce bias and get more high frequency, so add bias and make it flat. Good. Looks pretty nice to me for this age. And you see, we go to 20 kilohertz, almost like 19 kilohertz with type 1 tape. That was precise adjustments uh, of the head when I was able like, to remove tape transport and disassemble it fully. Right. Good. Still, pretty good results. Okay. And minus 10, 
I don't expect it to do is Nakamichi, yeah, but it's still pretty good. Minus six, minus six, it cannot do like Nakamichi, unfortunately. <laughs> I, but overall, when you, you listen to the sound, so there is already comments, right? Uh, it's, uh, this there cannot sound like Nakamichi, what you're talking about, and so on. I will make another demo and we will compare with my 680. Uh, here is type 2. And let me put it straight. And here is how we're recording. It looks pretty nice. Can reduce bias. It would not affect so much as in type 1, you see, but I still can change in quite wide range right? and one channel is a little bit off but it still like goes pretty well to 20 kilohertz like 18 19 like something like that pretty good now let's do metal tape type 4 With type 4, I have to reduce bias, you see, and have to adjust left right channels a little bit, since so they are not even. And that's the best what I was able to get from this deck because there is no separate adjustments. So they relied like that this adjustment should be enough, but bias adjust plus minus 1 decibel only on metal tapes. Uh, so that's that's what we have I still like pretty good results i will make another one demo of uh, the sound uh, let's compare and let's listen how it's different from the nakamichi sound because i was told that uh, it cannot sound like nakamichi i believe it can specifically after a good service See you soon.